find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dog, set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the floor. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, and this week, hey, we're just a few days out as we're recording this from the election here in the United States, and, um, well, there's a lot going on. And we're going to have an interview that's uh, very, very topical to that today. But first, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this show on Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Facebook or the um YouTube, both of those are Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. Woo! The good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com is the email address. Um, and, uh, and and let us know, what do you think? Who should we should be talking to? Whatever the case, at the email address or phone number. Uh, so let's get into that interview. All right, guys, we got a little bit different interview for you this week. I'm really excited to talk about this. This is uh, especially very topical as we're recording this. As we're recording this, we're about a week out from the uh, United States election. I'm sure you've heard about it by now. And, uh, of course, we'll be releasing this week as well. Uh, and it's very, no matter what happens or has happened by the time you hear it, this is going to be, I think, very relevant on on when we look back on on the things that have happened in this election cycle uh but with me right now is uh brandon weatherby who wrote a great book how the donald how trump turned presidential politics into wrestling i'm about a third through it and i'm very excited to see uh uh, how this is going i can't wait to get into the book with you how you doing today i'm good how are you Awesome, awesome. So again, we'd have a little get to know you kind of moment to, to start off the show to see who exactly we're talking about and what qualifies them to even be on the show. So, so we like to kind of find out like what is kind of your earliest memory of pro wrestling. Oh, I think with most people, I'm 33, so that means I was right in the heart of Hulkamania, but I never liked Hulk Hogan, and I'm proud to say that. And it's not some uh, rewritten history like, oh, it's okay to hate Hulk Hogan now because my favorite wrestler was the Ultimate Warrior, and there's absolutely no honor in saying that as a child, (laughs) that your favorite wrestler turned into a, well, not turned into a, but was a giant bigot homophobe and luckily died right before he could say another horrible thing, and now he's got an impactful legacy. Anyways... That was the guy I loved growing up. Um, that uh, steroids worked, so I didn't really follow him. Then Jake the Snake was my guy. I was Jake the Snake for Halloween. We were recording this on Halloween, by the way. So I was Jake the Snake for Halloween. <laughs> I want to say eight years old. It was probably when he was feuding with Rude, so around then-ish. Um, fell off the map. Absolutely hated the Attitude Era, which doesn't make any sense considering my age. Uh, and then I got back into it when CM Punk threatened to beat up Chris Brown. I'm from Chicago, so that also helped. And um, so that was it. And then in retrospect, rewatching every Mania in a row, Piper is clearly the guy, clearly the man, uh, still is. Uh, I was watching Royal Rumble 92 the other day just because that's not a good thing to do. Um, so those are the those are the basics of who I like, who I am, and now I think that the best wrestler in the mainstream is clearly Jericho because if he can make a piece of paper relevant, that's really impressive. Uh, no one else can do that. Um, I think Dolph Ziggler is my favorite person to laugh at that doesn't realize people are laughing at him and not with him. Uh, I, clearly, the New Day is fantastic, and the gimmick is still not old to me. Uh, in terms of NXT, I got red shoes this year because of Nakamura. I feel like that qualifies me enough to be considered a wrestling fan. And I have the utmost respect for every single wrestler, be it in the... I saw Cedric Alexander this year in a Virginia VF... Is it, no, it was a JCC. It was a Virginia JCC. And the reason why that matters is because I saw Cedric Alexander. And then the next month, they had a cage match in a JCC, not understanding why that might be a bad idea. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. that's amazing. We might have to get you on the main show here. Uh, but anyways, uh, wow. Uh, so this guy has some wrestling history here. So, and I think it's it's very apparent when when reading this book, of course. So tell us about what this book is and kind of where the concept kind of came from for you. Sure. Chris Kelly is the co-author, and, and Chris is more of a wrestling fan than I am. He absolutely. 
loves the physical aspect of it. And I like the talking aspect of it. I love the soap proper. I love the behind the scenes. I, I don't, I want to know how the sausage is made. I don't necessarily need to eat the sausage. Anyways, we decided to look at WrestleMania from a cultural standpoint, because like CM Punk, I'm a big Chicago Blackhawks fan. And I don't know if you know this, but in uh, June of 2015, the Stanley, the, the Chicago Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup. That's the, that's the biggest thing you could do that you, they won the belt. Um, and then a few weeks after they got the belt, uh, Patrick Kane was accused of sexual assault. Um, that's not a good thing. Uh, that, that means rape. He was accused of rape. And uh, because he's an athlete, they kept him because he's very good at his job. Unlike wrestling, if you're accused of sexual assault, they'll probably just get rid of you because they don't have time for that. So in a weird, screwed up way, that became my sport outlet. Chris Kelly and I decided to watch and look at, from a cultural standpoint, every single WrestleMania in a row leading up to WrestleMania, to the most recent WrestleMania. So that we started last summer. Around week four, we noticed, hey, uh, Donald Trump's in this. That's weird. There's a WrestleMania Trump Plaza. He, and he had already announced, he just announced he's going to run for president. We're like, that, that's a funny joke. And then the next week, we were like, hey, there's two in a row at Trump Plaza. And then we uh, realized two weeks later, Donald Trump is still there with his mistress, Marla Maples, and Alex Trebek at WrestleMania 7, and he's still in the polls. By the time WrestleMania 20 happened in our viewing, he had already come in second in Iowa, and he'd already clinched a bunch of uh, a bunch of primaries, which was really weird. And that's when we decided, like, we should probably flesh this out. And uh, we realized completely on accident that Vince McMahon and Donald Trump are pretty much the same human being. <laughs> and that, that's that's a lot of what this is. I, I was, uh, you know, I thought going into this, it was going to be just about like the tactics and 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 what he's doing, which I, I know you you get into a bit later. But like realizing that this was like a parallel, kind of a parallel autobiography. Yeah, it is. The book is in two sections. Uh, one of them is how Trump and Vince are the same man operating for the same reasons, for the same goals. And then the other part of it, the second part of it, is exactly how he's been playing the role of a heel throughout the duration of this campaign and has yet to stop. Uh, we had to pull the trigger on when to actually publish this thing because it's not over. It's clearly not over. And we kept thinking a pivot was going to come. And we were like, okay, we'll finally publish at the pivot. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the pivot is not coming for Donald Trump, the political candidate. The pivot has already come for Donald Trump, the businessman. Uh, I live in Washington, D.C., for better or worse, and there's a Trump hotel here. He had a, 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 you know, a normal presidential thing he does. The candidates usually open hotels in the middle of elections. Anyways, he ended up opening on Wednesday. And for the first time in, I'd say, 18 months, he actually spoke of hope and change and how the future is for the dreamers. So Donald Trump is willing to break kayfabe when it comes to being a businessman, but not becoming a political candidate. Wow. <laughs> Once again, I, could I, I'd like to point out, not a conspiracy theory. Now, one thing in this book is a conspiracy theory. Though we love Jesse Ventura, this is not an extension of what he does. <laughs> we use complete facts here. <laughs> complete facts. Yeah, it, 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 it really looks like it's an it's an analysis. It's not like, well, you know, we think Trump did this for X, Y, and Z. It was like, it was, it, again, it's autobiographical. Autobi excuse me, autobiographical. Um, it's, it's um, um, you know, it, it's it's... You know, the facts. And, and interesting because, you know, being someone that's very familiar with Vince McMahon and only knowing Trump really for the, oh, yeah, the Trump Plaza, is WrestleMania 4 and 5 and, and, and his appearances and everything and the haircut match and, and all those kinds of things, which I think I'm just to the haircut match part of the book, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 you know, it, it's interesting to see that, that similarity. Um, these are two guys. They're both are second generation businessmen you know, in their respective lines of work, I guess. Uh, and and uh, no wonder they're such, you know, they've worked so closely together over the years. Oh, yeah. They are also literal neighbors. They both have residences in Connecticut. Uh, <laughs> they've helped each other's political campaigns. Like, mm -hmm. they're, they're friends. They're not... Uh, <laughs> this is the only time where Vince McMahon has been brought up uh, during a Meet the Press. Uh, <laughs> do you remember the intro of the RNC on night one when he came out to introduce his wife, Melania? No, he stole the entrance from the uh, from Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look this up now. Actually, opened Meet the Press that week, saying he thought he saw that on the WWE, and Trump let off with, "Yeah, Vince McMahon's a great friend. We've decided not to do it again because we couldn't top it." That was at the Quicken Loans Arena. You know who was at the Quicken Loans Arena last week? The Undertaker. <laughs> well, it wasn't for wrestling. He was just there because LeBron James is a friend. But anyways, that's a tangent. Also, that's a weird world where where Undertaker and LeBron James are. 
buddies. So it kind of, sort of. I mean, did you know you know the story behind this? No, I don't. The Warriors were up three one in the NBA Finals, and uh, at practice uh, of the day before the three and one game, uh, LeBron wore an Undertaker shirt. Uh, like a like a fan made his friend made an Undertaker shirt. It's a great shirt. I highly recommend it. And then on the plane ride back from Oakland to Cleveland, he had on an Ultimate Warrior shirt. So he's a big, big uh, Raw fan, big WWE fan. He's been in he's been in multiple Monday Night Raws. So, mm. oh, Kevin Love also did. Uh, Kevin Love is also on the uh, the Kev- Cleveland Cavaliers. Big, big WWE fan. Did the Stone Cold beer thing. Uh, had a Stone Cold belt. Yeah, he's. He, we're all into it. It's great. So, let's like see. I, I'm to the point where we're kind of looking at the parallels yeah. between the two of these, right? Uh, you know, obviously, there's there's a lot. Even, I mean, news articles people are comparing to things that are happening in a campaign. Obviously, the visuals that they are and see uh, uh, to that. Um, you know, I don't know. Can you speak a little bit to that? Like, what what tactics? Uh, you know, without detail that you get into in your book, are, are, is he really kind of going to here? Well, it, it, it's twofold. Uh, in terms of a as a character, as a politician, he's a straight up heel. Uh, it's wonderful, and the best example of that would be all of the debates. Specifically, I'd say when there was I don't know if you remember this when there was a sixteen candidate field. That's when he was able to insult the most amount of people and just spread the hatred. It, it was wonderful. Straight up heel tactics. There's there's no way around that. Um, it's absolutely no different than what Stone Cold or The Rock or Piper did same thing when it comes to the money stuff. Um, they're literally friends and they're literally donating to each other's stuff. Uh, last week, the McMahons came out that they donated $5 million to the Trump foundation. Uh, the Trump foundation was also proven to not actually be at a charitable foundation. It's just a way for him to collect money and then spend money on lawsuits. So, uh, both financially they're in bed together. And then as a character, it's the same. Uh, the interesting part about this is when Vince McMahon was in the WWE world, in that world, he was a, never a heel. He was always a face. I don't know if you remember this, but he bought Monday Night Raw. Yeah. When he bought Mon- Yeah, when he bought Monday Night Raw, those were co- that was a commercial-free edition of Monday Night Raw. Uh, and he, they also literally rained down money on the people at one point. That's not a heel. That's a face. <laughs> so in the WWE universe, he's a face, he's operating his campaign like a heel. That being said, um, there was, what doesn't make any sense is when he was inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, This happened in 2013. This was for the WrestleMania at NY slash NJ. And uh, he was booed mercilessly throughout the entire induction ceremony, Uh, which makes no sense because Trump was never portrayed as anything but a hero. Um, this is, I think this is in the book. I hope this is in the book. Uh, <laughs> Dutch Mantel, uh, actually said that Trump stole his gimmick because he watched that match, uh, the Del Rio match, Jack Swagger match and complimented him after the match saying, I love what you did out there. And he, uh, jokingly said that that's what the 2016 campaign actually is, which is an ex- extension of, uh, of, uh, Mex American or whatever. <laughs> That failed gimmick. Wow, wow. I, I mean, it is it's something like I've been trying to not pay attention as much as possible to the politics and, and 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 seeing this, but but it is something that a lot of us are sitting back and be like, I, you know, if you if, if you can catch those kind of nuances of wrestling and be like, eh, this seems this seems familiar. Um, what about the uh, and I don't know if if uh, with the book release if it it, it 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 kind of fit into this. What do you th- see that he expressed in the uh, uh, debates? Oh, um, he never backed down. He never broke character. He never apologized. He uh, he did exactly what he's supposed to do. What's the flair quote? Um, Win, lose, but cheat, always cheat, something like that. That's the same idea. He mm-hmm. never stopped insulting. It was beautiful and brilliant. Also, you lie. The, the same way you build a feud is the same way he operates. Um, I feel feels so silly using fake people's names about the most important office in the land, but whatever, because it's all the same. Um, I don't know if you remember the Dean Ambrose Stone Cold podcast that was relatively popular because Stone Cold clearly hates Dean Ambrose. The best part about that was when uh, Ambrose explained how he would build a feud, how he would cut a promo about a feud. He would say, hey, your leg's weak. I'm going to attack your, your, your weak knee. 
I'm going to destroy your knee, your knee, your knee, your knee. The same thing with the emails. The emails aren't a thing. No one cares about emails. Do you Have you ever been like, oh, I deleted an email? No one cares. It's not a thing. He made it a thing. He made that storyline work. It's brilliant. Whether you like him or not, you have to appreciate it from a storytelling angle. He's able to continue a narrative that never was really there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And a little bit like he seems to come off as, you know, the, the best the best heels are, you know, ones that believe that they're right, flawed or not. And and when yeah. you watch a Donald's uh, speech, it's it's no, he truly like he comes off that like, no, this is how I think, you know, no, this is how it is. Mm-hmm. No matter what you think of the facts or when the facts are completely against them, as you would see in the debate, like it's like that's not true. That's untrue. Mm-hmm. Who's saying that? You know, regardless. Yeah. And, and it weakens. It seems it's to great. weaken. Real concrete facts at this point don't matter. Yeah, it's great. Once you realize that that's the world, uh, the, the political world is really no different than the squared circle. It's a lot more freeing and fun. Um, none of this matters. It's all the same. Um, but in a good way. <laughs> We know who the heel is. We know who the face is. Um, I don't know if you, you're following this. This is going to be in the second edition of the book, but Rhino is actually running for office. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Michigan. He was here in Pittsburgh uh, with his yeah. vote. He had a tip of uh, donation jar at his, at his merch table and the vote for Rhino. And even Sam Man came out with a vote for Rhino shirt. Yeah, he's in hard campaign mode right now. <laughs> he's running in the 15th district for uh, State House out of Dearborn. And that's an actual race that I'm really interested in. And I think that is going to actually have some more real consequences than Trump, because I don't think Trump ever had a chance. I still don't think Trump ever had a chance. That doesn't mean his supporters are wrong in any way. I'm just saying just statistically and financially, that's how it shakes out. But Rhino, in a small enough House district, he's currently a tag team champion on SmackDown Live. Every single Tuesday, people now see Rhino, people that might have forgotten about Rhino. If Rhino is able to get even 100 more votes... Because if his appearance is on SmackDown Live, that's enough to sway a House election. Wow. That's fun. That's great. That's amazing. Yeah. So this is the most pro-wrestling election cycle probably ever. Um, yes and no. I mean, ev- literally, George Washington wrestled. Literally, Abe right. Lincoln wrestled. Right. But these were actual. This was not fun wrestling. This was more homoerotic stuff than i'd like um i actually no, no no it was just homophobic this is more homoerotic i want more homoerotic um george w bush uh sorry no that's correct that's incorrect george h w bush was friends with a texas promoter good friend uh so there's been wrestling connections arnold schwarzenegger also in the wwe hall of fame mm-hmm. also a governor clearly jesse the body ventura um, the closest trump ever came before this election cycle was running in 2000 as part of the reform party uh, he was keeping his seat warm for Jesse. That almost happened. So that might actually be a little bit more wrestling heavy because at the time the WWE was, or sorry, at the time the WWF was a little bit more willing to talk about it. I don't know if you saw recently the gag order Vince kind of gave his wrestlers this week. Oh, really? I wasn't aware of that. That was something I was going to ask about because yeah. it's been interesting that there's not been much commentary or mention given given the involvement with the WWE Hall of Famer. Well, Jerry, the King Lawler was threatened over Twitter uh, before the first primaries about his support over Trump. So I think since then, it's sort of like, maybe maybe we shut up about this. Um, but Ziggler's in the book. Uh, he's come out on record saying that he has no political agenda because it's not that the WWE told him that he can't or shouldn't, but because he just doesn't want to divide an audience. And I understand that. Uh, the New Days also come out saying that they're definitely not for Trump. But they def- they did not endorse Hillary nor Bernie. This is during WrestleMania, um, so people are very open and honest about it. The only person that I know for sure has a candidate is Daniel Bryan, uh, the man with multiple concussions. Uh, he's endorsing Jill Stein. He's done that on Smack- SmackDown Live two SmackDown Lives ago. Uh, he was reprimanded off mic for talking to- for comparing himself to Trump in a negative way and apologizing for that. And uh, John Cena, when he co-hosted the Today Show last summer, uh, spoke out against Trump. So people have said some stuff, but nothing uh, blatant. We haven't seen any impersonators wrestle like we have in years past. Mm -hmm. Um, But here's a fun fact. Regardless of who wins next week, Tuesday, uh, the president for since at least the year 2008 will have appeared on WWE programming, considering Obama, McCain 
and Hillary all appeared uh, the night before Pennsylvania, before a power, um, I think it was the Pennsylvania primary in 2008. So we're safe for a minute. Every president has to go through Monday Night Raw. So ladies and gentlemen, your pro wrestling fans are well represented now. Uh, well, they're represented uh, uh, somehow in the White House, one way or another. Um, wow. It's a lot to digest. Uh, so uh, we'll lighten this up on the way out the door here. Uh, first of all, what are you watching these days? Do you have a pro wrestling fan? Wrestling or in terms of not wrestling? Uh, let's go pro wrestling. Uh, the Royal Rumble 92. I'm just, I'm still going through a <laughs> Piper spiral. Uh, he's my favorite. He's always going to be my favorite. I was lucky enough to interview Jake about the book nice. and about some stuff. So clearly his documentary with the hopeful, happy ending. And, um, the, the, clearly that's a good one to watch. Um, I'm really enjoying SmackDown is the best show. Hands down. It's the best show. Uh, SmackDown live is actually the best show. And I love the Bella twins, uh, show because it's the first show on E that's really just about depression and concussions. Uh, if you, here's a tip. Uh, I like to do the dishes while I have an iPad, like on a bowl in front of the sink, right? So I'll watch uh, Totally Bella's thing. I don't care. And uh, I'll, st- I'll turn the water off whenever Daniel Bryan or John Cena are speaking. And then when the stupid brother's talking, then I wash dishes and I can't hear anything. And if you just watch it that way, it's this beautiful examination about aging and death. I love it. It's so deep. That's great. I haven't, t- I haven't checked it out yet. So uh, we're going to pop that up on the list. The uh, brother's horrible. Just mute that. <laughs> so bad. I can't Such imagine. Uh, why did they bring him in further? Wait, is he living in the house too? Yeah, I think they just had a gimmick because Cena's there like maybe two minutes, an hour. And then Daniel Bryan's there maybe 10 minutes. And the other, and Bree's on the road at the time. So it's just Nikki. Who's Nikki going to interact with? So they bring in the mom and the brother. Yeah, and it's free. It's clearly not for us, and they're doing a good job because it's making a lot of partners of people that love wrestling somewhat care about it, so I'll take it, yeah. but come on. Uh, number two, sorry, this is complete tangent. How is, how is the WWE shop not yet selling Brie Mode maternity wear? <laughs> Missed opportunities, jeez. We're leaving money on the table, guys. Come jeez. on. Jeez, jeez, they're supposed to be the experts in this uh, in, in, in this side. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wait, is she pregnant on the show? Uh, they talk; they're talking about it, okay, and that's like one of the reasons why she's retiring. But this is why it's such a good show because just does Brie want to have a kid? Because Daniel's suffering from this deep depression and is like mm-hmm. crying and needs to see a therapist. Like this is some heavy stuff. But then it's like, well, the Bellas are going to go to Vegas and go on a pool and a slide. Like it's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> All right, and finally, usually we ask, what is the best and worst thing about being a pro wrestler? I want to ask, what's the best and the worst thing about this election cycle? Other than you, have a, of- other, other than you have a book now. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> the best thing about this is being a straight white man in America because, because no matter what, everything is still catered to me. And the worst thing about this is um, uh, everyone that's not a straight white man in America can enjoy it at the same level as I can. Um, Regardless of who wins office next week, I'm going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Most, A lot of professional wrestling fans will be fine. But any Mexican professional wrestling fan, there are already a lot of stuff against them. Any woman that's a wrestling fan, that's not a good thing. So um, I, I'm of the, I think that this election cycle has been very healthy for the country, but I, I know I'm in the majority of that. I, I kind of I want to know the enemy. I want to know what they look like. Um, I don't want to just assume everything's okay. Does this make Does that make sense? I think so. I, I hope I didn't refer to forty one percent of Americans as the enemy because I don't believe in any of that. But just I, I want the bigotry to be out there so we can move past it. Okay. I believe in the power of positivity. You believe in a, a little bit of a, a transparency in in what's yeah. really going on out there. So okay, yeah. this is probably the deepest uh, of this show that we've ever done in one hundred and thirty some odd episodes. Uh, so. <laughs> Sorry. That's no, that's fine. That's fine. I knew what I was getting into for this one. So thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Everybody, where can people check out the book in uh in any format they want? Donald Trump is a wrestler.com. I did not have to buy that from somebody. Chris and I were able to get Donald Trump is a wrestler.com. Uh the <laughs> ebook, the audio books there. We have a podcast, a weekly pol- uh show about the intersections between presidential politics and professional wrestling. So uh, we got a good target audience of about 12 people that are really into both worlds uh, equally. So 
Yeah, by the way, the, what's on your screen right now, that's uh, The Rock and uh, Dennis Hastert. Uh, he went to jail uh, for uh, fondling kids. Uh, he was a wrestling coach. So there is another connection. That's uh, The Rock at the RNC in the year 2000. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the podcast is called The Great American Bash. Yeah. So the perfect, the f- perfect, perfect name for something like this. Thank you so much. Check him out. Uh, Brandon Weatherby. Donald Trump is a wrestler dot com. Uh, it's, it's been a fantastic read so far. Uh, audiobook form because that's how I roll. Uh, so it's just like podcasting, but scripted. Thanks so much. Uh, great talk there. Like I said, you know, a, really eye opening as far as uh, uh, what you know this election kind of resembles and how much influence eh, kind of professional wrestling or how the similarities between uh, the Donald and, and, and Vince and everything. Uh, in the meantime, hey, go check, go check them out again uh, um, at that website that we talked about um, on Amazon. I've been listening to the audiobook and some good stuff. So if you don't got time to read, you want to get this in before the election or whatever the case, I think it's worthwhile for you. Uh, check out everything again. IndieWrestling.us is uh, where Riz is doing a column around the Indies so you can see what's going on, what's the important stuff. And, of course, our good friends with the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, with IWC with uh, uh, Premier Championship Wrestling out of Cleveland, Vicious Outcast Wrestling over there. Sign up for the newsletter and support all those guys. Support a lot of things going on. This weekend, I'll be up in Clearfield, PA. Holy crap. Right up there in Central PA, out of the middle of nowhere, for uh, Clearfield Carnage with the International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, So if you have any Central PA or traveling uh, mayhemers, uh, please say hi uh, up there. I'll probably be running around because we're going to have a very interesting configuration for our video production uh, for the night. So uh, please uh, uh, go go check that out. Go check that out. And, of course, it will be on DVD and digital download at IndiaWrestling.us shortly following the show in the coming weeks. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our guests. We'll see you guys next week on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, I believe we're going to be scheduled to be talking to a very surprising interview. Um, if you've checked out the Twitter Indie Wrestle Life, um, really good uh, kind of motivational and pro indie wrestling uh, site and and Twitter. We got an interview with him coming up very, very soon. Check that out. We'll see you guys next time. And remember to support indie wrestling. Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Act wild, steady sipping check Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com